Oh, hello. Do you know what she made him do? Yeah, come here. Listen, if Carl Sagan shows up again, you're not gonna let him lead you away, are you? Are you kidding? My sole concern now is to get back up to my electrokinetic levitator. Good man. Edna made Parker close your booth down. I know that. So he'll only open it up again if we could find a way to discredit her. Do you know anything that'll ruin Edna's standing in town? Yes, I do. She is a rotten kisser! Oh! That wasn't what I had in mind. Assuming we get Parker to open your booth back up before they call your name, is the levitator ready to go? I'll accept the power source. You did bring the static accumulator, didn't you? Yeah, I've got it. You want it now? No. Wait till we get back to the booth. Edna never confessed anything to you, did she? Like what? Something incriminating. Like, for instance, her being the speakeasy arsonist. Edna the speakeasy arsonist? Then again, why not? But she never said anything about it to you? No. I gotta run. Did you talk some sense into those two? Oh, a Sisyphean task if ever there was one. How about an algae cake? Sure thing, mister. Wait a minute. You're the guy that makes the algae cakes? What? I thought you couldn't stand them. Hey! You're the guy that tried to pick up on my Eunice! Oh, for the love of... No algae cakes for you, buster! How about an algae cake? One algae cake coming right ahead. Hey, wait a minute. It's you! Forget it, mister. Hey, Artie. Is there any way you can delay Emmett's demo? He ran into some last-minute turbulence. Emmett's already pushed his luck by substituting this electrokinetic what's for the mental alignment meter he was supposed to be showing. I can't alter his place on the roster, too. The board would get the idea I was showing favoritism. Edna Strickland got Officer Parker to close Emmett's booth down. What? Why? She claims his invention is dangerous. Is it? That's not the point. Come on, you can tell me. How did you manage to get Trixie her job back? I thought her being Canadian was a deal breaker. If something's really important to you, you find a way. You ought to know that. See you around. Convention special! Two free algae cakes with every vi Experience the wonder of the continuophone. Well, it's already got me wondering how the heck to pronounce it. Algae cakes! Miracle food from the swamp lid! Get your algae cakes! I think that's supposed to be a clock. Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls.
Are you ready for a picture radio? Wonder if that's anything like MTV. Oh. The Electro Pacifier. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. Now, there was a potted plant. What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tannen's speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Hey, don't walk off with the recording plant. It's the only one I got. Oh, now, where were we? Oh, hello, Smirnoff. Now, can you please leave me alone? <laughs> ...blown to do my job. In a minute, I'm not quite through yet. This plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. Flowers of the future. Just like a regular potted plant. Only fake. Thinkers of Hill Valley. What? The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. <laughs> Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? Okay, call me a snoop. Oh, hello, Sh Hey, Emmett, mind if I talk to your ex for a minute? Could you? The detective and I need to have a rational conversation about my invention. Are you implying that I'm irrational? Come on, Edna. Did you see? Trixie Trotter got her old job back. Oh, I know! I tried to have it out with Arthur McFly, but he refuses to explain himself. A 
Apparently, he discovered some sort of loophole that allows that Canadian to retain her position. Well, the Ladies' Decency Society shall hear about this. Make no mistake. Have you seen Mr. Sagan around here anywhere? No, and I wouldn't tell you if I had. He's more than a little scared of your anarchistic tendencies. I haven't got time for this. That's funny. Soon Emmett and I will have all the time in the world. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Checkney News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you! Mr. Sagan? What happened? I thought you were distracting Emmett. I was? Oh, yes, of course I was. Then why is Emmett standing here, valiantly trying to convince Detective Parker that he should be allowed to go through with this ever-so-dangerous display of wrong-headed technology? What can I say? I was outsmarted by that wily Yakov Smirnov. Well, that puts a crimp in our plan. Yes, yes, our plan. About that plan. I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. You were supposed to keep Emmett distracted, but it appears that you've been foiled by Mr. Smirnov. What can I say? He's too smart for an old fogey like me. So I see. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking. Wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh... But that was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away, and I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? 
It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Hiya, folks. It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress, gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit, hey folks? If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future, right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. Oh, hello. Excuse me. Marty! Michael! Smirnoff! Um, I just want to talk to Detective Parker. You know how you said you'd defy Edna if I could dig up some dirt on her? Yeah? You got some? Edna's the speakeasy arsonist. That's an interesting theory. It's the truth. I heard her confess. Well, I didn't hear it, so I'm afraid it's your word against hers. And no offense, but her word carries a little more weight around here than yours does. Thanks. I'll be back. Well, I hope so. You've got to get this albatross off my neck. Well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Oh, hello. Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? I'm busy trying to keep Emmett from letting you lead him into the biggest mistake of his life. Mistake? My biggest mistake was... This'll only take a minute. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Shh, listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Edna, you're the arsonist? D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Emmett? You're on your own, darling. Oh, very well, I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for that. Not to sound callous, but does this mean I can demonstrate my invention? Let's take that as a yes. Greetings and salutations to all our honored guests. I am Techni, Muse of Progress, and it is my pleasant task once again to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. Great. Come on, let's get up there. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. Then it looks like all systems are gold. Wish me luck. Don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown! Objection! Objection, Your Honor! I hereby demand that a scientific demonstration of one Emmett Lethra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity! I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father! Where is he? Hand him over this instant! Ugh! That boy! 
Damn it! Shh. Don't give me away! Just jump in the levitator and go. What's he gonna do? Shoot me down with an anti-aircraft gun? Come on, Emmett. You can't miss your big moment. You don't look very dignified crouching down there, you know. Better undignified than dead. I thought you weren't scared of your father anymore. When he's in a mood like this, I'd have to be suicidal not to be scared. Well, let me talk to him. Emmett, are you up there? <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? Come on, Mr. Uh, Judge, sir. You're kind of making a scene here. Wrong. I am stopping my son from making a scene here. Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not going to say anything... So he is up there with you. Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second. I want to speak to my son. Emmett's not ready to talk to you. Uh, directly. I suppose you're his mouthpiece? I guess so, yeah. You can't talk him out of it. His mind is made up. So, if talking won't work, there's always threshing. Can't you two have it out later? You mean after he's gone through with this ridiculous stunt? Yeah. No! If I can say so, sir, the problem is, is you're coming on too strong. You intimidate him. I don't intimidate him enough. That's the problem. Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. You dare to disobey a direct... Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. So, what's your plan? I just stand here like this indefinitely. After a few centuries, the process of petrification will set in, and that'll be that. Okay, that is a plan. Just go deal with them. What have you got to lose? That's what they said to Custer. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. You won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. So, is your client prepared to make a statement? He says it's no use talking to you. Y you never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot. Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like Let's to be young. Understand. You don't know what it's You're like to have dreams, to have ambitions so great and so powerful that they've got a life of their own. You. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they gallop on where they, they must. Don't. This Chuck is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? Emmett? Care to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna? Deep down, he's just worried about you hurting yourself. No amount of physical pain could equal the pain he's already inflicted to my spirit. Okay, so he's got a strong personality. Strong personality. Lord save us from strong fathers. 
Why couldn't I have been born to a nice, wimpy milk toast? Yeah, well, that's no picnic either. The important thing is, fathers can change. Says you. I don't know. I think you two are on the verge of a breakthrough. Ugh. Please, y you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. See, Your Honor, it's just that this demo is so important to Emmett. <laughs> a childish kerfuffle. He'll forget all about it in two weeks' time. That's what I'm afraid of. Emmett's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. Okay, but if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kinda... good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe, and maybe not, but even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it there are no more mistakes. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language with only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me! And I made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well, Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to. Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Emmett? He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Oh, skip it. You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be the you and your dad? No. Next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride. Okay, I, I get it. And so does he. But what's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. May I come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I'm here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Pop! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see, the force field generated by the static accumulator... Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator.
I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before. No, don't come any closer. Stop. Go away. But... Move. Move. Party. Oh my god! Doc! Say something! Chromium, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll get, I'll get help! Newspaper. What? You mean... to get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh. I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Doc, come back. Have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great Scott, that's it! So, what comes next? Work, work, and more work. A few more stumbles, followed by a breakthrough or two. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. I'm, I'm fine. You don't sound fine. Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. But where you come from, what you're doing here... There's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any... What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. Okay, here goes. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait. I will see you again, right? 
guarantee it. Same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever. But what are you doing in 1931? I came to stop you from marrying Edna. Edna Strickland? I could never marry her. I mean, she was my first love, but after she broke my heart and tried to sabotage my career, I never saw her again. Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his pop on the moon grave. So that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was Great Grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of... That car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait! Edna Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it. It made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys. You mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. H how? Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey. What on earth is that thing? 
Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it? A hill or a valley? No, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. Did someone make Hill Valley disappear? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then whatever it was must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but he got run off by Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. Say, if there's anybody who can tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. Can you direct us to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. Why wouldn't she talk to us? The thing of it is, guys, Mary's older than dirt, but she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite. Please, we gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got a notion I'll be checking myself for sending you up there. Can I drive? Mary Pickford.